yeah. uh, a hat trick here. Uh, how do you rate the? their chances in this title race if she keeps that kind of form going. Yeah, Manchester City, when, when they're on form and they're fluid, they're, they're unplayable. Um, yesterday, Liverpool obviously took the lead. It was probably against the, the run of play and, and Liverpool did gift them a few goals, which Manchester City are going to punish you if you if you gift them goals. But Buddy Shaw, of course, it's, it's the different types of goals that she can score as well, whether it's a, a cheeky back heel, whether it's a, a header, whether it's a shot, you know, inside the area, placing it into the, the net. She she has so many opportunities and, and that obviously comes down to when you've got Lauren Hemp on one side and, and Chloe Kelly on the other. You've got the midfield behind who are obviously going to create chances for her as well. But they just look so fluid. And when you watch Manchester City, you sort of know the patterns of play, what they're trying to do, but it's so difficult to stop them because they're so in sync and so in time, that the way that they do it. So, yeah, they're, they're certainly a, a team in form and, and are going to be very difficult to stop. Mm. Um, but it's Chelsea who lead. Yeah. And talking of difficult to stop, Lauren James, a hat trick uh, for the second time at Stamford Bridge to beat Manchester United, put Chelsea clear at the top. So if, if, if Bunny Shaw is good, how good is Lauren James? Very good also. And there was lots of talk, wasn't there, about Sam Kerr and, and her injury and how much they're, they're going to miss her. And I'm sure at some point they will. You're going to miss a, a world-class player like that. But, yeah, Lauren James, 10 goals in her last 11 games, obviously the, the standout. But it's just how she makes the game look so easy, you know, creates time for herself, coolly slots home. And just thought Chelsea were in complete control yesterday. You, you thought that they'd go on and, and win it comfortably. But then Hayley Ladd got a goal back and you thought, oh, Hang on a minute, Manchester United then had a couple of opportunities to, to go and equalise. They didn't take those chances. And that's the thing against the top sides like Chelsea. If you have opportunities, you, you've got to take them. They didn't. And then Chelsea went on and obviously won the game quite comfortably in the end. But that's Lauren James, that, that brilliance, that moment of, of quality or moments of quality that she can produce. Top quality player that's only going to get better as well. Emma Hayes described her as a genius footballer. Do you see that in her? Yeah, I think she's the the most naturally gifted um, when you see her. I don't think she overthinks the game. It just becomes natural to her when she's on the ball. And I think that shows you the quality that she's got. I think sometimes you can, um, in, in any type of football, whether it's men's or women's, you can often see people processing things as, it, as the ball's coming into them or thinking about the next move. Hers is just a natural movement, and I think that just shows the quality. She must be so difficult to play against. It's She can go on a left foot, she can go on a right yeah. foot. She's quite comfortable to to do either. It's just the way she glides past players, she finds space. Like you said, it just seems natural, doesn't it, to mm. her? And, yeah, she's a top-quality player, like I say, that's only going to get better. Do we... And, and I'm thinking maybe in the England context as well here, do we, do we have too much expectation on her because she is still very young? And, and is there a frustration that sometimes and other bits get in the way? I think we always, we spoke about it earlier, didn't we? We always put this expectation on, on young players when we see them come through, but she seems quite laid back about it all. She seems quite confident that when she goes onto the pitch, she can perform, whether that's, you know, in a, a competition for England, whether that's in, in Chelsea, playing in whatever competition that is. Um, but, but are those the signs of cracking when she does those little bits off the ball where she's stamped on the player? Then yeah. she does. Or, or is that what makes her so good? Yeah. That she's she got that little the fire edge. in that's it. The, yeah. that's, the, that's the hard part, and though, as a manager, is. to try and what do you do with her? Yeah, because you don't want to take, take it away that from out her. of her because yeah. that's probably what makes her so good that she, she plays on the edge like that. I think yeah. of Kelly Smith, yeah. you know, very similar in terms of she would be somebody that, that would put a, a challenge in like that, but it's because. They play like that. I think the very yeah. best players, yeah. they do. They've got that little bit of, of edge about them. So it's you try and sort of coach that. And I suppose with experience, you, you probably yeah. learn, don't you, that they're the sort of things that you're not going to get away with. Um, but as regards the quality that she has, yeah. it's, it's on another level. Mm. Manchester United manager Mark Skinner says he is absolutely secure in his job. Uh, this is despite Skinner out sign among some United fans. Um, have, you, have you ever heard of that in the WSL? And does this show actually the nature of it changing? Yeah, no, normally you, you don't. Um, you, you don't see that. So I think when you, you do see that, and that, that's happened previously, 
when you speak to Manchester United fans, there's some fans that are very much Mark Skinner needs to go, we need something new and, and something fresh. And then there's other fans that I've spoke to that have said, well, actually, we can feel for him. They go into the season losing two of their best players in, in Russo and, and Bacchier, two yeah. very good players that are going to be difficult to, to replace. But you look at where they are at the moment, Chelsea, 10 point advantage over them, and you just feel that they need to stay within touching distance. That opening part of the game, Chelsea completely dominated Manchester United and they did get themselves back into it. They did miss opportunities. But I think what we saw last season, we thought we were going to see a real progression and they were really going to challenge with the likes of, of Chelsea and Manchester City. They just looked to have dropped off a little bit. So I feel like the fans are probably a bit divided at the moment. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because he had a big decision to make on Ella Toon. Gisela and, and, and make, make the money. Um, yeah. Sorry, not Elatou, uh, Russo. Russo, yeah. Uh, Alessio Russo. And, he, and, and rather than taking the money, they thought the gamble was, was worth taking. And then you look at Mary Earps now and you go, are you better cashing in and rebuilding the squad a bit and getting to a point? And that's the decisions that managers live and die by. And sometimes they come back and bite you. Yeah. And you just wonder whether not getting rid of Russo and taking the money and being able to reinvest it back in the squad might actually come back and haunt him a little bit. But it's a decision that's yeah. very difficult because you don't want to lose your best players, even though at some point you know you're going to lose them. Yeah, look at Mary Earps, you'd think she's a keeper. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Beth Mead's header helped uh, Arsenal earn a 2-1 <laughs> win against Everton to move them uh, level with uh, Chelsea at the top of the WSL for a day anyway. Uh, how important is she to this Arsenal team, Sue? And um, um, what kind of impact can she have in this title challenge? Yeah, it's so important. You, you need your best players fit and available. And I think once she come back from, from that ACL injury, it just gives everybody a lift. Um, that the quality that, that she has, the experience that she has off the field as well. But just to be able to produce moments like that to, to go and win a game because Everton were resilient. They made it really difficult for Arsenal and, and there might have been waves and waves of Arsenal attack, but Everton stayed quite organised. And sometimes you just need, like I say, that, that real sort of quality and, and that's what she can provide, whether that's an assist or, or whether it's a goal. So, yeah, it's great to see her coming back. Obviously, Miedemar coming back fit. I, I don't know how far Leah Williamson is, but hopefully she's not that, that far away because you need your best players when you're going to be challenging for the title.